good. Hello, Joel M here, magician, coffee advocate, rascal, having a good time here in Coffee Rustler, and I'm here to talk to you about a couple of things. Firstly, these amazing cherries, get to that in a moment, uh, but more importantly, we're here to talk about social media. Mmm, it's exciting. It's my whole world. Never meant for it to be my whole world, but over the last couple of years, I've learned a thing or two that hopefully you might find useful. Should you like to grow your brand as a magician, mentalist, whatever it happens to be that you do, so let's get into it. There's a few things I like to talk about when it comes to social media, and also I hope you don't mind me fiddling here. All us magicians have that weird form of needing to fidget all the time, so I will do that and drink coffee. It's very good. Anyway, uh, I, there's, a, there's a format that I like to sell to people uh, when it comes to socials, which has worked for me and many of my friends. And I think it's pretty much the structure that most people in the social media world use in general, not just magicians, uh, because it works and it makes sense psychologically. And I'm going to break that down in a couple of steps for you. Hopefully uh, follow along, I don't waffle too much. Anyway, social media. So just to give you uh, context and maybe why you might want to listen to me and feel free to not because there's people who do a lot better than I do. But I went from zero, like everybody, about three and a half years ago on my platforms, uh, roughly to just shy of 20 million people. I didn't buy them, I promise. Wink. No, I didn't, and that's the point is, uh, I wanted to do it properly so I could really build an audience that I could then leverage and monetize and use to do live shows, which is sort of what I'm now doing since COVID's gone for the time being, fingers crossed. So how did I do it? It sounds like a weird thing to go from zero to 20 million in such a short time frame. And really I can give all these ideas, loads of praise because I did not come up with them. These are things I've learned off amazing mentors and friends who are doing so much better than I am. And I've just tried to take it and make it work for me. And a lot of it comes down, as you would imagine, to the actual content. I'm going to say this before I get into it. So many questions that people have about social media aren't the right question. And it's usually what hashtag do I use? What's the right caption? When should I post? And a lot of this stuff does not matter until you've got the content down. And the people that typically ask these questions are the same people that maybe only have one or two posts on their social media page. So if that is you, I would implore you to really take a look at yourself and think, hmm, am I actually posting stuff that people like? Now, that's a whole other thing. Uh, and how do we create stuff that people like? Because a mistake I made for years was posting videos that I thought were good, featuring magic tricks, but they didn't get good till about 30, 40 seconds in, sometimes longer. And you could have the best video in the world, but if nobody watches past three seconds, it doesn't matter. No one's ever, they're not going to know. So the key here is to build a good hook. And simply meaning, if you imagine you wanted to hook a fish when you're fishing, I don't fish. If you're fishing, you throw out the hook and you hook in the fish. And that's what we're trying to do, but with an audience. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is to cut the nonsense and you want to get straight into your video. So if you're doing magic, uh, and I'm going to be straight speaking in terms of video, by the way, I'm not an expert in photos, any of that stuff, just video, particularly short form, although long form, typically we follow the same format. But anyway, you want to hook the audience in. Best way to do it is just to literally cut the fat and get right into it as fast as possible. You can use uh, clever imagery. If you're using props, you want to make that right center stage so people don't have to think. It could be bright colors. It could be a little circle around what you want people to focus on, but you have to get creative and really think, hmm, if someone was scrolling down the For You page or the Explore page or whatever it happens to be, how would I get them to stop and pay attention to me just for three seconds? I would shoot for even less than that, one to two seconds. That's how you're really going to get people. And if you want to get ideas on how this might work, what I would say you should try to do is scroll down your, your social media pages and every time you find yourself watching something, stop, go back and think, hmm, why did I watch that? Because I guarantee you there was a clever hook at the start. There has to have been, our brains are now just so ADD that we wouldn't have stopped otherwise, unless it's something that really interests you. But in general, a viral video, if that's what you're going for, not necessarily massively viral, but enough to stop a spectator, has to be a good hook. That's the most important piece of information I'm gonna give you. If you take nothing else from this, make the hooks to your video important. That's number one. Number two is, you gotta keep them there because you could have hooked their attention with a Snapchat, which is what every magician does to get their attention. So don't do that. But then you've got their attention and now there's a big break of dead time. You're going to lose them. You have to keep things moving forward, especially now, as I say, attention spans are getting shorter and you want to keep people there. You want to keep them right to the end of the video. I'll tell you why in a second. So how do we do this? Well, 
two sides to it. Number one, you can use editing to crop down if you're, it doesn't really work as well for Magic because you don't want to really edit too much, but if you can, edit it down so you cut out the beats. I would say your best bet is just to rehearse what you're doing before you film so that there isn't a lot of dead time and get rid of the nonsense, get rid of the stuff that's not important. Once you've done that, I call that cutting the fat. That's when you get into the third step, which is the call to action. Most people hate doing this, but I like to ask my followers and viewers to actually stop, hit follow, subscribe, whatever it is. Why? Well, because I believe that what I'm doing is good and that it makes people happy. And if you are doing magic, it does that as well. So have no shame in asking people to hit the follow button. You could do that with text. You could actually physically ask them. It doesn't matter, but do that. And I guarantee your results will double. A lot of people think it's cringy to do it. Every successful social media person I've seen does it. So, so there's no there's no argument. Listen, you could try and do it without it, but it's gonna make things hard for you unnecessarily. So those are really the three steps. Hook, build up, call to action. If you use those three things, your content will be a lot better. Of course, there's other things like just keeping it simple. Uh, there, I mean, you could talk about the actual choice of trick as well. Those are all important. But if you follow those three steps, you can make something that is inherently bad, probably quite good and quite catchy. So those are my three steps and tips for social media. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram is the best place, at itchjoelm, send me a DM, uh, say you saw this. Uh, I should say as well, my choice of cards, and I'm not just saying this, the man behind the camera will confirm as well, when I do magic videos, is the cherries. And the reason for this is, this is actually a bad example, is I use cards that have a bright color. So this talks about getting the hook. If I'm doing a card trick, I deliberately pick things that stand out. Make sure you're picking things that really do stand out and look good. Uh, aside from the fact that I gig with these two because they don't look like a mad magician's deck of cards and they actually look like something you would use. They're fantastic. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing a hard sell, but also people, by the way, magicians that use these will know that lay people love the fact that they say casino on them. Weird thing. Anyway, uh, just relating back to the point about wanting to stand out, if you use something that looks nice and is aesthetic to the eye, that's a huge part of what works on social. So make sure you're picking your props well, standing out, getting to the point and telling people what to do, which is following you because you're handsome and you're beautiful and you deserve to be famous, if that's what you want. I'm not famous. Anyway, cheers. <laughs>